Greetings, this is Jim Todd with Video Surgeon and welcome to this week's weekly video tip. This week we're going to talk about how to get the most out of Video Surgeon's zooming feature. And to do that, we're going to cover five different ways in which you can use the zooming feature found in Video Surgeon. So let's go ahead and get started. The first way is simply to zoom in as you are using playback. So I have a small looping area set up here. And this is not a particularly fast section or anything like that. I just want to show you the power of zooming in and the power of zooming in while you're watching something repetitively. So here's a guitarist. And again, doesn't matter whether you play guitar, or tennis, or golf, or anything else. The zooming feature can benefit you in the same way. So let's go ahead and zoom in. So there's a two-fold zoom. And there's a four-fold zoom. And I'm going to drag it here to the middle of the screen. And now let's watch it play. Thanks. Four three, four two, four one, four one stretch. Third string sing. Four three. So we're repeating again. Four two, four one, four one stretch. Third string. So we have that as opposed to this, which is the normal. Four three, four two, four one, four one stretch. Third. Okay, so that's the first way in which you can use the video zoom. The second way you can use the video zoom is to use it in conjunction with the freeze frame. And again, if we scroll through or want to watch or look at something, we can look at this frame by frame. You can see down here we're moving ever so slightly because we're moving frame by frame. However, if we zoom in, one, it's a two-fold zoom. There's a four-fold zoom. Let me grab and drag it to the middle here. Now we can scroll through this video and we can observe either second increments, quarter second, tenth of a second, or down to frame by frame. But we can observe what's going on as we scroll through and as we're zoomed in. So that's the second way. The third way is while we're zoomed in, we can actually print this particular frame. So if we go up here to print, you can see that this particular frame, um, although it's a smaller representation, obviously, it does embed in the printing this zoomed in feature. So when you print this, you'll have a normal size sheet of paper. And in this particular case, we'd probably want to make this landscape rather than portrait so it fills the paper better. But you can print this and have a copy of it so you can refer to it in the future or you could take it to class to show your teacher or if you're a teacher you could take it to a um, lesson or an instruction uh, to share with the student. So that's the third way. The fourth way is that you could actually select print to file on this same screen and when you select print it will now allow you to save it as an image file. So we could put um, tar fingering zoom. And we could save that. You can see that it's there. And just to show you what that looks like then, let's go ahead and open that file up. Here it is, and I'm going to open it in, oh, let's say the default Windows Photo Viewer. And there is that file. And the fifth way then is to actually export this particular video, or in this case, I'm just going to export this small little section right here. So if you can try to remember this particular amount of zoom that you see on the screen right now. Let's go ahead then and compare that to an exported version. So I'm going to export, export the current loop. I'm not going to change anything about it in terms of tempo or pitch or anything like that. We're simply going to call this uh, fingering zoom. Just call it test. Okay, let's go ahead and export it. Export is done. Let's go ahead now. Okay, now remember this because we're going to go ahead and open this new file. We exported it. 
fingering zoom test. There it is. Let's open it back up, asking us if we want to close the current project. We do. Don't want to save it. It's importing and now it's rendering the audio. Let's go ahead and take a look at this. Four, three. Four. And I think you can see that this newly created video has the same zoom as the previous video that we had open on the screen where we had zoomed in fourfold. So that's it. Those are five different ways in which you can use Video Surgeon's zooming functionality. And any one of these could be useful depending on what it is that you're trying to do. But certainly if you keep these five things in mind, you'll get the most out of the zooming functionality that's found in Video Surgeon. Thanks for watching.